Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me at the back? Yes? I said good morning. All right, thanks a ton. So you heard my bio. Uh, decade plus in the armed forces, another decade plus in the corporate world. Uh, part soldier, part CEO. A lot of my friends ask me, what's the difference between these two worlds? And to tell you the truth, actually, there are a lot more similarities between the field of warfare and the arena of business. And I want to speak about that. And uh, towards the end of this presentation, also leave you with a tool which, will, which is taken from the armed forces, as the title of this presentation says, from the battlefields to the boardrooms. And hopefully, that will help you in not just your studies here, but also in your careers as you go along. So let's talk about some of the similarities between warfare and business. More contenders fighting for less resources is the fundamental definition of warfare. But that is also the fundamental definition of business. There are more people who are trying to sell to less customers. There is more advertising falling on less mindshare. There are more contenders who are applying for seats in engineering colleges. There are more people who are in placement and less jobs over there. But every location that you see, every kind of uh, business enterprise that you see, the essence of that business is more contenders fighting for less resources. Let's see another perspective. Pretty much any technology that you use today has either been invented or been scaled up because of warfare. So you look at radar, x-ray, sonar, uh, commercial aircrafts, jet engines, internet that you use, uh, without which we can't live, is being originated largely because of war. And there is a reason for that. When countries go into war with each other, when it's an existential crisis, then the countries will bring their best minds, their best resources, and try to put that in an effort to create the best technologies. A third perspective. If you look at org structures, the smallest unit in the armed forces across the world is usually a section of 10 men. And these 10 men are given to a charge of one individual. One person is given their hawala, and that's where the term havaldar comes from. The next unit is normally a platoon, which is commanded by a lieutenant. And a unit above that is a company commander who will roughly command a captain or a major who will command roughly about 100 to 150 troops, and so on and so forth. When you look at businesses, when they start, typically a startup will start with about 5 to 10 people. When they scale to the first round of funding, they'll normally go to about 30 to 40. And when they scale to the second and the larger rounds of funding, you will see that the spans of control that are used in business are exactly the same spans of control that are used in warfare. And that's where you realize that pretty much anything that we do, its origin lies in warfare. And many people think war is bad, but let me give it to you in another perspective. When mankind first started, you had the hunter tribes and you had the farming tribes. The farming tribes farmed, as Nitin pointed out, it was a very complicated business. And the hunting tribes hunted, which wasn't easy either. Now in a particular year when the game was bad, the, the uh, game were not to be found, the hunters were starving, the children were dying, they suddenly realized that we are hunters. We can hunt saber-toothed tigers, we can hunt mammoths. Why can't we simply hunt this farming tribe and take away the grain from them? And that's when they started attacking the farming tribes, and the farming tribes realized that we can't just be farming. We also need to raise our own armies. And when they started raising their armies, some guy figured out that the cost of raising this army is ten times more than the grain that this uh, hunting tribe is stealing from us or raiding us for. And why can't we just exchange and give them a portion of our grain and ask them not only not to attack us, but also to protect us from the other attackers and wild animals and all of that stuff. And that is how tribes got together and nations were formed. So when we come to the current scenario, we realize that pretty much anything, any scenario, and as I told you, I'd spent a decade in the forces and uh, a decade plus in the private sector and the corporate sector. Any problem that I found 
that I was facing in the corporate sector, I found that the answer to that lay in some drill, some process that had already been discovered in the armed forces. Today I want to share with you a tool, a framework that is used in the armed forces across the world to design complex operations, to, to, to undertake massive campaigns. And the beauty of this tool is that it can be learned by a person of average IQ because these complex operations have to be implemented by uh, troops uh, who go all the way down. I mean, these troops are 12th class pass, uh, 10th class pass troops. So no matter how complicated the operation is, they need to understand it. And this entire framework can actually be taught in, in less than about 18 minutes, the time it takes for a TED talk. Once you learn it, you will never ever forget it. And this framework can be used to design any operation. It can be used to write a term paper. It can be used to develop a business plan. It can be used by a startup to scale up. And as many of you sitting over here, I hope, will go on to become uh, startup CEOs and startup founders, you will find it very invaluable because most startups fail. Not because the idea is not good, not because funding is not available, but they fail because they are not able to scale up. They are not able to take the passion and the ideation and the synergy of the founders and convert that into scalable operations when they grow from their tens to twenties to hundreds to thousands. So are you with me so far? Ready to learn the tool? So all you need to do to learn this tool is to remember this phrase, Z kit bag. Kit bag you all understand? Kit bag is a bag in which soldiers carry their stuff. And Z you all know, it's the last alphabet of the alphabets, right? So most of the orders in the Indian Armed Forces have a mixture of Urdu, English, and Hindi. And there's a reason for that, because we all evolved these orders from the erstwhile British Indian Army, which had uh, erstwhile Pakistan, at, at one point of time, even Afghanistan and India in, in, one, uh, in one contour. So Z kit back, and I will take each alphabet and explain what it stands for in the military, and what is the equivalent in the business world? Z stands for Zamini Nishan. Zamini Nishan basically means the lay of the land. Whenever you're planning an operation, you need to know what kind of terrain you're going to be operating in. Are there mountains? Are there deserts? What's the wind conditions? Can you land paratroopers? Is there water? Are the water bodies seasonal? Will the going be easy? Will the going be tough? Can you take jeeps, tanks, trucks? Will they support the weight? That is the lay of the land which is the first fundamental when you're designing an operation. In the business world, Zamini Nishan is an environmental scan. You need to know which environment you're going to operate in. If the business that you're getting into is medical business, then you need regulations about that. What are the entry barriers? What is the level of rivalry there? What are the five forces that are operating in that environment? You need to do that environmental scan before you begin making your business plan. Kit bag begins with K. The K stands for khabar. When we are designing an operational campaign, you need to know information, and khabar is always beginning with khabar information about your competitors. Who are the competitors who are already entrenched? What is their strength? What is their capability? How much of funds do they have? What is their resourcefulness? What is their depth? What is their ability to withstand an attack? And the same thing is true in the business as well, because unless you do a competitor study before entering into the market, you will be blindsided by the competition which is already there. The next part of khabar is your own khabar. What is your capability? What is your strength? Where will you draw your alliances from? Who will ally with you? Who will give you the funding? Who can be strategic partners to you? That is information about yourself. Which is the next alphabet? I. I stands for irada. Irada has to be spelt out in crystal clarity so that the last trooper in the organization understands it without any ambiguity. So a typical irada would be our platoon will capture this hilltop earliest but not later than 0600 hours tomorrow morning. Now the reason why troops need to know the strategic intent in complete clarity is that they must be able to assume orders in the absence of orders. So in case the commander is killed, in the case the commander is not available, in case there is a communication breakdown, the troops need to know 
what would I do if my commander was giving me the orders? They should be able to assume orders in the absence of orders. The same analogy is in business. That when you state an intention, we will capture 20% of the market share within the next 36 months. That clarity has to be there in the entire organization. It can't be a general fuzzy thing that generally we'll get into the market and figure out what to do. That business is never going to succeed. What's the next alphabet? T stands for Tarika. What's the methodology? How will I achieve my intention? Will I do it in phase one? Will I do it in five phases? Who will be the commander of each phase? How will they hand over to the next phase? What will be the handing taking over signals? How will we know that phase one is completed and phase two needs to begin? So each element of the Tarika, step by step by step, is designed in the T alphabet. Are you with me so far? What's the next alphabet? B. B stands for Bandobast. To do this mission, how many troops do I need? What's the troops to task? What kind of artillery support do I need? What kind of air support do I need? Where will this air support come from? In case air support doesn't come, what is my plan B? If plan B fails, how do I do plan C? Where, does, where is the resourcing of all of this going to come from? All of those elements are dealt with in Bandobast. What's the next word? Next alphabet. A. A stands for administration. So you might recruit 6,000 people, but where's the logistics going to come? Where will they sit? Who will give them the laptops? Where's the internet connectivity going to come from? Who will manage their HR? Where will the logistics of this entire, most military campaigns either succeed or fail because of logistics? And that is also true for businesses. Most businesses succeed or fail because of logistics. There are many businesses which are doing exceedingly well, but they fail because of cash flow. Cash flow is nothing but logistics. And the last alphabet. Now, in the armed forces, you might have noticed, we are very, very particular about time. We are very particular about being punctual. And there is a reason for that. The reason for that is that if I am attacking a position with 200 troops, before attacking that position, I need that position to be softened by artillery shelling or air bombardment. And if I give the time of my attack is 6 o'clock in the morning at first light, and I need RT shelling there from 5.50 to 6, 10 minutes of RT shelling. Can you imagine the situation if my watch and the artillery commander's watch is off by just 30 seconds? Do you know what will happen? When my troops are attacking, my own troops will be shelled by my own artillery. And that is why G is extremely important in any plan. G stands for Ghadi Milao, which means that every soldier, every commander, every supporting troop which is taking part in that operation will have their watch exactly tuned to the same time. So when I say 9 o'clock, it's 9 o'clock in everybody's watch. Now that's a very important part in the business side. Because in businesses what happens is many times you say, I need this document as soon as possible. Now as soon as possible may be 45 minutes for me, it could be two days for you, it could be three weeks for this person. So unless the organization gets a common vocabulary, which has exactly the same meaning for each and every person taking part in the operation, that operation is set up for failure. So let's do a recap again. Z kit bag. Z stands for Zamini Nishan, the environmental scan, the market conditions. How do you operate in that market? What are the essential features of that territory, of that product, of that service, of the rules and regulations that you need to know before getting into that operation? K stands for Khabar, you always begin with competition first. You first understand what the competition strengths are what their weaknesses are, where you can attack them, where if you attack them, you will get a very hard knock, where if you attack them, you might get away with it. Next part of the cover is your own strength, your own capabilities, your own wherewithal. I stands for, Irada has to be crystal clear for each and every individual so that they can assume orders in the absence of orders. T stands for the methodology. How are you going to conduct the operations? How will you go step by step, phases, each phase, handing over to the next phase? Next comes, Bandobast. 
What are the troops to task? What are the resources that you need? After that comes administration. What are the logistics? What are the requirements of making it happen? And finally, you come to Ghari Milao. Now, interestingly, this talk, as I promised you, you can use this format for anything that you do. Organizing a TEDx, planning for your term paper, planning a large event, you can use exactly the same format. And those of you who like to code, do you know that C language was written in C? Similarly, this entire presentation has followed exactly the same steps of ZKit back. I began by setting the context, by explaining to you what was the context, the whole scenario of the army and how it has implications to the corporate world. Next, I gave you information about the army. I explained to you how the army is organized, how there are different units, how each unit is led, what are the sizes of those units. I gave you the irada. The intention was to teach you a framework. I explained it to you step by steps in Tarika. After that, there was Bandavas to make it happen. I had to be over here. Uh, there is uh, this speaker that is uh, the mic that has to be done, the, the wherewithal of uh, making it happen. Administration is the logistics of coming over here, coming here last night, staying over here last night. Someone had to coordinate that. Someone had to make this planning to make all of that happen. And the last part was Ghadi Milao. And as promised, within 18 minutes, with more than a minute and a half to spare, the entire process has been explained to you. Thank you very much. Jain. Thank you.